Hi and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will talk about the MPEG 1200 watt pure sine wave inverter. MPEG was a generous and provided me this pure sine wave inverter 1200 watts. And I want to test it. I want to see if this one actually delivers 1200 watts, if it also has the pure sine wave. So let's get started and see what it can do and what it cannot do. And I can tell you, it's going to be hot today. I think you don't need to see me anymore. What you should understand, what we have here, what the, this nice looking box. It comes with the Ampeak Pure Sine Wave 1200 watt inverter. And it says safe power inverter. It does come with those wires. It also comes with uh, two sets of those uh, bolts, washer, spring washer and the nuts, two sets. So four total. It does come with those rubber cover shoes or boots, whatever you want to call them. We'll install them together. And on top, I don't know if you can see this, they provide you a 10 millimeter wrench and they have their own logo in here, Ampeak. That's pretty cool. And you get to keep it. So if the inverter doesn't work, you get this little wrench. Pretty cool. I like it. It would be even cool if this one would be a ratchet wrench. Ooh. Anyway, we'll set it up now. And for this video, we will not only use the Ampeak inverter. We'll also use the Red Audio 100 amp hour 12 volt lithium ion phosphate battery mini. The reason why we're using this in combination with the 1200 watt inverter is that simple. It does state that the max continuous discharge current is 100 amps. With the 12 hour system it converts in 1200 watts. So I think that's there's no better chance than this one now. And I think I need to tell you a little bit more about this unit before we connect everything. I can see that it's ETL certified by Intertech, but also what we can see, it has AC output 105 to 125 volts and 60 hertz. And it also comes with USB outputs and those are on this side, AC and then two USB ports with 2.4 amp. And we have an on off switch. We'll keep it off. Additionally, we have a display up here and we'll see how that performs as well. And on this side, uh, maybe that's one you can see better. We have those uh, sticking out um, terminals where we have to use um, bolt and nuts to connect. And that's what we're doing now. On the box, you can see the ETL certification. By the way, they do have an official website, but also they have an Amazon store. Let's connect it. We'll start with negative over there. And you prepare already the negative cable I put on the boot. I have connected the bolt and I will now connect it over there. And you want to, you want to make sure that this lug nut touches the terminal. Same with the positive, boot is already on. I'll use a Phillips screwdriver and the wrench to deliver it. All right, now I want to cover it, so I'll put on the boot. And by the way, those wires, those are six gauge, so we'll have a close eye on those ones, how they heat up with uh, 100 amps going through them. Because usually I would go around with four. I talked and I asked MPEG specifically about this and they mentioned that this is UL certified and UL certification um, use the same wires, so it should be good. All right, if they say so, we'll do that. By the way, what I didn't talk about, but the crimping on those is okay, I would say. Looks like a plier crimp, I would, I would assume. So not hydraulic or anything. I hope it's tight. And that's how it looks here. Um, this one looks a little flat. I would use probably a little bit more, but um, we'll see how it holds up. And as always, keep the inverter off so there's no spark coming on. If for whatever reason there is this, use a resistor. Let's turn it on and see if we connected everything correct. And it does turn on. So I hope you can read it better. So what we've connected is just the inverter. Nothing else is connected right now. What you can see here on the display, input 13.6 volts. 13.62. All right, 30 minutes 60, it's pretty close. That's good. Then we have the temperature, 91 degree. Um, let's be honest, it's pretty hot here in the garage. So let me 
see, I don't know where it's measuring the temperature. I'll measure on top. So we have 87.3. Here it says 91 degree, okay. That's depending on where the temperature sensor inside is located, so it's possible. We have output of 1920 volts. All right, we have zero amps going in and out, and it's on 60 hertz. The only thing what I'm confused about, not the battery status, that looks good because battery is pretty full. I'm really confused about the 10 watts. Why is it showing 10 watts, but it shows zero amps? Let's see if there is some current flowing. Here we have, here we have 0.7 amps going in at a moment. All right, 0.7, Amps times 12 is something around 8 uh, watts. It doesn't explain, explain the 10 watts. Let's turn it off and on again. Let's see what happens. It says 1 watt. Okay, 0 amps, 1 watt. You heard the fans going on really quick. I turned it off and turned it on again. So now it's display off. It does have a little LED backlight. And there it is, and it shows one watt. Okay, that might be the own usage what it needs. Let's keep going. And I said earlier, what's going to be hot, we'll use a heat gun, just to see if we can max it out. And let's see what the display does and how it reacts when we set it on level one, because level two will be too much already. I think it's pulling about 14 or 1500, and this one can only do 1200, but we'll see what it does when we do that. So let's start. Now you can hear it in the background. I hope it's not too noisy. And what can we see? We do see the voltage drops. We do have 700 watts consumed. The output is at 114 volts, okay. What's weird, it shows 6.2 amps. 6.2 amps are equals um, 74.4 watts. Let me see if I can find this really quick. And it does say output current and up there's output watts. So something's wrong here. I think the math is wrong, to be honest. 706 watts are equals almost 60 amps, 59. So this is closer to what it should be. Right now it's pulling without any flaws, any issues. Let's see how accurate the wattage is so far, what we can see here. I can only measure in amps. So you can see it's pulling 61.3 amps. That would be pretty correct here with the 6.1 amps if the dot is just moved a little bit further right. Okay, so now we have the 706. It's running for a little while. Um, and I assume that's 706 watts and I'll put 114 volts on 6.1 amps. I think that's what it is. You cannot calculate a 706 with a 12 volt system because um, that would be wrong. So it's probably 114 times 6.1 amps and that's equals to the watt, what's coming out. And when we look here, ah, uh, sorry, when you, when you see here, 61.4 and that's on a 12 volt system. It should have been explained a little bit better if it's for this voltage. Um, sorry, I might be wrong, but for me, it's not obvious because I would assume this is for the 12 volt. Anyway, it's getting hot in here. And now also the fans kicked in, you can hear them. So let's add a little bit more load, I would say something I wanted to do the whole time. I need to charge my other battery over there anyways. Let me go closer to it. I hope you can hear it. And it says it's at eight watt. All right, I had to move this a little further. Now we have a constant load of 300 watts, which is discharging this battery, this red audio battery, and it's going straight into another battery. And on top, we'll start a load of around 700 watts um, with this heat gun, and we'll see how it holds up with around a thousand watts. And now we check the voltage, 12.2, 12.1, Let's see. So, right now we have around 12.7. Uh-huh, and it says 12 volt on the inverter. I think it's pretty good, almost a thousand watts. Let's see what we're pulling out here. Almost 100 amps, that's what it says. The wires are getting a little warm, so 
I think now it's time you can tell. I hope you can see it. It says 125 degree. On top of the inverter it's 92. It looks like the air is pulled in on this side and pushing it out over here. Go a little like this. Still at 90. And here on the other side. It's around 99 on the other side. The wires are getting pretty hard already with not even 100 amps. Did you get an idea? Oh yeah, it's getting hot. Ooh, this one is getting hot here. Here we have the wire 108. So it says it's 95 amps going through. We have 960 watts when I calculate it with 12 volts. Then it should be 80 amps. When I do the math over here, 113 volts times 8.5 amps. 960 watts, so this would look right. Unless the fact, honestly, I, I see 96 amps going into the inverter already. That's quite a lot. And the wires are getting pretty hot, especially, ooh, especially up here where the lock nuts soldered on. Ooh, that's pretty hot. This red audio battery is holding on pretty, pretty well for a mini. Man, that's amazing. Regardless, let me see if I can get this one one more time because this is insanely hard. Not sure. It gets to a point where I can barely hold it. All right, 113 degree, this wire over here. It's pretty warm, it's pretty hot, so I'll stop the heat on. Also, it's getting pretty hot here. So, the fans are still running. It claims the temperature is at 147 inside, I would assume internally, because outside, you can barely feel it. It feels colder. It feels way colder than the wires. What I'm doing now, turning it off. And as soon as I turn it off, that is very sad. I feel like it's turning off the fans as well. Or maybe it's good, I'm not sure. It really depends. But um, when you have such a high heat, you would hope that the fans would maybe have a, an after run, a post run or something like that. What does it look like? Turn it back on. Temperature 141. Now it does have time to cool off. So here it's cold air. Man, man, this thing got freaking hot. Yeah, that's what I assumed. 130 up here on this lock nut. So this area, 133 degree. Oh, the fans are getting quiet a little bit. I mean, they're they're decent loud because they need to cool it, which is fine. 129 degrees. That's cool. It, it did hold up to a thousand watt. The wires um, with, I didn't do a thousand two hundred watts so far, but the wires are freakingly hot. They're cooling down now as well. The one of the battery is a four gauge. This one is a six gauge. I'll do one peak test now with 1200 watts and above. We'll see how uh, this one reacts, but I would not continue using those if I were you. All right, I think now we do the above 1200 watt test and see direction. And let's turn on the heat gun on level two. That was quick. Was that a second? So there we have it. Pretty impressive test with battery. Okay, I did set it up here. It's testing the pure sine wave. You can see it. You get a closer look. Plugged in here, right? So we have the wires. Going to the pure sine wave tester here. And you can see it's a pretty decent pure, uh, sine wave. Let's see, we can go a little. Sine wave looks pretty good, I would say. Uh, I don't see any big issues here so far. No big movement. So it looks good. I'm not an expert. It's okay, cool. I do have a just basic 300 watt load charging on the battery with a different charger. And here on the side, we can see it's continuously having a pure sine wave. One thing I want to mention here, because um, you saw it a split second, probably at 1400 watts. I double checked, this one does not have a switch power, so it doesn't mean like other uh, inverters, which tell you 1200 watts, pure sine wave, and then there's a 2400 watt switch. So when there's, for example, AC and it's high startup power, this one might not be able to handle something like that, at least the 1200 watt version. Keep that in mind when buying it. It does have uh, one of those communication ports and as much as I know, there's also a remote turn on, turn off. So you could install this somewhere in your van, in a camper van or whatever, and then have um, the remote 
basically route it somewhere and be more visible to turn on and turn off this inverter, which is nice to have. I did not see uh, this display turning off or this inverter having a standby time after some certain time. I was also told by MP this is not the case with this anymore. They turn it off in the past. There might have been something like that. This one does not turn off after a certain time. This one will stay like it is. So that means this display will be turned on all the time like it is. And right now the fans are running. So I guess there's a higher load. It shows 21 watts. Still it's something which I'm 21. And we can see here it's at 0.5. It's six watts. So I don't know why there's 21 watts right now consumed. I have no idea. I cannot tell you this. I cannot answer that question. Maybe that's something um, which needs to be adjusted in my opinion, showing the watts, showing the volts here and then showing the amp. Um, a little more explanation on how this is calculated would be great. And having the standby 21 watts is wrong, I feel like. If it needs that amount of power for the fans, okay. I don't see um, this current going in. I only saw 0.5 amps going in, which is equivalent to six watts. Now it shows here again, eight watt. And when I look here, it says 0.3 volts and 28.5 amps. I do not know what is happening. Turn it off, turn it back on. And it readjusted. Output 119 volts, and then we have zero amps, and then we have the three watt. Well, when I do that again, this looks good at the moment. And turning it off and on seems to solve the issue. Two more things they recommend turn off the inverter when not in use, because otherwise, this one might really suck your battery empty. So do this. And additionally to that, they also give you, which is nice to have, they give you 18 month limited warranty. Alrighty, I had to be a little bit more creative with this one, but look at this. So I just want to do the test with the output. So sadly I have to whoop, turn it like this. So it's kind of readable, 700 watts. It's currently 6,674 watts. 702, 675, 674. I'm pretty sure it's due to its own efficiency. 705, 702, 675. So there's a little difference and variation in there, which um, most likely is due to what it consumes in its power and how efficient it is to convert between 12 volts to 120, 110 volts. So this is all, I have mixed feelings about this inverter. It did perform pretty well with 1000 watts I had on it as a load. I'm pretty sure it will hold up to 1200 watts as well. But as soon as you go a split second over 1200, it will turn off and say overload. So there's no search, I feel like. There's this immediately shut off. Keep that in mind, it's very important. The display, it's cool that they have it. I would like to see that the backlight turns off after a time. You could, you don't even need to adjust it, but like it, it turns off after, I don't know, 30 seconds. Not turning off maybe, but just turn off the backlight. That would be great. Also, I was, I, I'm really not sure about the display, what displayed with the watt, the volts and the amp. I do not know how to calculate it. It felt like that when I measured on the wire itself, it was different a little bit, so I would like to see a little fine tuning there as well. It feels like it's a great unit, it's aluminum housing. Temperature internally was pretty hot. Outside you you really didn't feel that that much. I have to admit, I'm here in a garage, it's pretty warm here as well at the moment. So, And of course I had a heat, heat gun running, so that also didn't help for cooling off. But those things I would like to see, um, I think it's a good solid device. And uh, after double check, Price-wise, where it is at the moment, when there's a good deal for it, I think, why not? If you only need less than a thousand watts, hey, perfect. If you know you will need more, you should look, should look into other devices. And it did work well with measuring because sine wave. I did like that one. And, and there's a remote, which I didn't see so far. Maybe I get a chance to look into the remote, connect it as well and test it out with the next unit. Who knows? Oh yeah, oh, very important. And the wires. Upgrade the wires when you wanna have a load running, a thousand watt the whole time. Upgrade the wires, just to bigger ones. Peace of mind. All right, I hope that helped you to figure out if you like that device and want to test it as well. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Cheers.